Hi, thanks for checking out today's message from Calvary Baptist Church in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. We are in week nine of our Fruitful Living sermon series based on the book of Galatians. Today's message is about the battle within. We are looking at chapter five, verses 16 through 26. The Life Notes are available now to download from calvaryaz.com forward slash Life Notes. Now, here is Pastor Chad Garrison. I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5 is our text. If you're in one of our campuses here at Sweetwater or Parker and you don't have a Bible with you, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. Turn to page 1,157. You'll be able to follow along with us in Galatians chapter 5. And as always, if you're at one of our campuses and you don't have a Bible and you want one, take one, please. It is our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word and read God's Word. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, ask for one. We will get you a Bible because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Uh, hey, uh, this morning we had our annual business meeting as Ministry of Calvary. And uh, uh, we just got to share a whole bunch of good news about what God had done. And I want to share some of it with you simply because uh, I'm excited and I want to brag on you, okay? And uh, uh, like, for instance, I'm excited that to this point, 11 months of the church year, because we're July through June, 11 months of the church year, we've had 173 baptisms, and we've got almost 50 people signed up for tomorrow. So isn't that cool? And uh, by the way, if uh, you are a follower of Jesus and you have not yet declared that publicly in baptism, uh, why don't you come down and take that step with us? It's a party. There's going to be ice cream, because I asked. And, uh, and we're just going to have a great time celebrating life change in the name of Jesus. A couple other things to celebrate. Uh, our in-person attendance uh, was up 10% year over year, uh, over 1,900 a week. Uh, we had 16% increase online attendance. So almost 1,500 people a week are tuning in, joining us online. That's amazing. You guys can't hear online, but they're cheering for you, okay? Just, just so you know. Uh, okay, now here's, here's one of my favorites, and Parker Campus, this is aimed at you guys. Parker Campus experienced a 61% growth year over year in their attendance. That is amazing, and uh, that's why you guys are in two services and filling those up. And then just uh, one of those things, again, I love to celebrate— we, as a ministry, gave over $850,000 to mission causes in the last 11 months. Isn't that cool? By the way, that's 21% more than last year. So uh, God is good, and I'm celebrating what the ministry of Calvary is doing in and through us, and, uh, and I praise God for that. Hey, uh, how many of you have ever been in a fight? Oh, a lot more than I thought. Some of you are like, yeah, last, last night. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> how many of you have ever won a fight? Okay, how many of you lost? Yeah, oh, more, oh, a lot of hands. Which do you prefer? Yeah, you, you know, look, I, I don't like getting in fights. I've only been in a couple my whole life. I, they were both of them were in uh, high school. But uh, if, if I have to choose it to fight, I want to win. Anybody with me? I mean, it's just kind of how it is. Uh, so today, we're talking about a battle. We're talking about a fight that all of us as followers of Jesus are engaged in. So if you're a follower of Jesus, this, this applies to you, okay? So if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sin, that he was raised from the dead, and you've made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then I just want you to know that you are in a battle. And this battle is within us. The Apostle Paul describes it brilliantly in Galatians chapter 5. It's our text. I want to read just the first three verses of this text right now. We're going to keep walking through it. Galatians 5 verse 16, the, the Apostle says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. See, we are fighting a spiritual war. We're fighting a spiritual war. That's what Paul is talking about. He says, look, 
if you're following Jesus, this is your reality. Okay, this is your existence. This, you're in a battle whether you want to admit it or not. You're in a fight whether you want to acknowledge that or not. Whether you want to be or not. See, what happens is we're, we're all sinners. You guys know that by now, right? You've been hanging out with us, you know that. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. We are sinners. We're natural born sinners because our ancestors sinned. They invited sin into this world. Sin taints every single person born into this world. So we are natural born sinners. And we have a sin nature that is part of us. Uh, it's what Paul calls the flesh. The flesh, it's part of us. And it's that part of us that is addicted to sin. And when we confess Jesus, that was that moment you said, yes, I believe, I'm following Jesus, I'm committing my life to him, then God the Holy Spirit comes in and redeems us. He, he puts, you know, the Holy Spirit is now in us, and he's the one who's teaching us to be like Jesus. He's the one who's calling us to follow God. He's the one who who's, makes us aware of sin and convicts us of sin and teaches us truth and enables us to follow Jesus. But we are still living in sin-addicted bodies and we still have sin-addled brains. So the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the flesh, our sin nature, are fighting for control of your life. Okay, now, understand, th this isn't like uh, maybe, this is like reality. This isn't like, oh, I'm choosing to. No, this is like, this is what is happening in your life, in my life, every single day that we inhabit this world until we meet Jesus face to face and we get rid of these filthy trash bodies and we get new ones, okay? Yeah, that's a good day, okay? I don't, you know, it, it's gonna be way, you know, we don't, we can't even imagine what that's like because we are so ingrained in our sin that inhabits us right now. So, uh, by the way, if you're sitting here going, well, I don't know, what's the difference between my spirit and my flesh? Let me tell you what the flesh is like inside of you. It's the part of you that wants to indulge in selfish and self-destructive behaviors. Okay? You, you, so you know what that part is right now, because I just said that, and you're like, oh, that's who that is. That's the flesh. So my flesh, look, look my flesh just wants to overeat if it tastes good. Okay? I don't, there's no such thing as moderation. It's, it's like it's good. I want more. And my body's like, you don't need more. And I'm like, yes, but I want more. You know? And uh, which is why I can't do a reasonable bowl of ice cream. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it's like, uh, I can't do that. My flesh wants to be selfish. It wants to sit in the recliner while Morelda does the dishes. You know, just what it does. It's, it's like, all right, I can just sit here and she can do that. My flesh wants to be lazy. It wants to be lustful. It wants to be greedy. And of course, it wants to be arrogant. See, that, that's my flesh. And your flesh probably wants a lot of those things too. It wants to be selfish. It wants to be indulgent. It wants to be adulterous. It wants to give in to addiction. It wants to get angry. It wants to be dishonest. It wants to get rich. You see, we are fighting a spiritual war and it's inside of us. And Paul says, if we live by the Spirit, we won't indulge the desire of the flesh. Say it again. If we live by the Holy Spirit, we will not indulge the desires of the flesh. That is a huge if. That's a huge if for every one of us. It, it's like, if I do this, but you, you, we all know the ifs, right? If I went to the gym and worked out, I would be in shape. If I stopped eating all the crap in my life, I would probably be uh, a lot thinner. You know, there's lots of ifs. So if we want to win this battle, we have to acknowledge that it's real. We have to acknowledge that it is descriptive of our lives as followers of Jesus right now. That it's not some theory that people are talking about. It's not something that, you know, is maybe going on. No, this is, this is real. So you can't play the church games and pretend that you aren't tempted. Say, I, I mean, I, I've been around people who are like, who act like, well, I used to be tempted, but now I'm holy. <laughs> Drives me nuts. Because I'm like, I, look, I grew up in that world and I thought I was the only one who was being tempted. And, and it made you feel guilty and it made you feel ashamed because you're like, you know, I was 17 when I wanted to go into ministry. I said, okay, God's calling me into ministry. I'm going into ministry. And a 17-year-old boy, imagine, brain, 17-year-old guy. Every guy in this room knows what I'm saying right now. Okay, <laughs> lust is an issue. It's just, it's a real issue. And I'm praying, I'm begging God, please take the lust away. And he's laughing at me. And because uh, he wants to teach me self-control, right? And I'm just like, and, but nobody at church is talking about 
they're, they're lusting. And I think, I am the only worm in this room. I am the only sick, twisted puppy in this room. And then I got a little bit older and I started talking to people and I was like, oh, I was not the only one. You guys are all a bunch of sick, twisted puppies. <laughs> so you've got to identify the desires of your flesh and get honest about your temptation, which is why here at Calvary, one of our core values is transparent living because God desires us to be real, open, and honest about who we are and allow others to do the same. Not judging each other, but praying for each other so that we can be healed. You see, once you get honest, you can win the fight. If you're not honest, you've already lost the fight. Let me just say that again. If you're not honest about your struggles, you're not honest about your temptations, you're not honest about the desires of your flesh, you've already lost. Because you're hiding, and you're lying, and you're covering up. Because no matter how well you pretend in church, our lives reveal who is winning. Our lives reveal who's winning. Let's keep reading. Because uh, Paul gets really, really descriptive. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Okay, our lives reveal who's winning. And Paul talks about two contrasting or opposing lifestyles. First of all, he talks about the works of the flesh. He said this is evident. It's easy to see these. And, and by the way, it, it, this, this always cracks me up. Churches like to focus on part of this list. Okay? If, if you grew up in churches like I did, then they like to focus on certain things on this list. And, and you know what they are. Sexual immorality, perversion, idolatry, sorcery, drunkenness, and orgies. You sick people. You need to repent. You evil ones. I mean, look at all these things you're doing, and that's making God disgusted. But... That's not the whole list. In fact, that's only about half the list. Because what, what, what cracks me up is that Paul mentions a bunch of sins that are found inside the church. Now, by the way, all those sins are found inside the church, but, you know, most people engage in that first part, hide them. People engage in the other parts don't hide them, but they also don't get rebuked for them in a lot of the churches. Right? Enmity. Strife. You've never known anyone, any strife in the church, Right? I mean, I grew up Baptist. Every business meeting was like, you know, WWE. Uh, only it wasn't scripted. So, uh, jealousy. How come she gets to sing the songs that I want to sing? You've never heard that in the church, right? How come, how come they get that classroom instead of me? Fits of anger. Have you ever seen anyone angry in church? Fits of anger. I've seen people angry in church and they're leaders and nobody rebukes them. They just get their way because they're yelling and screaming and angry and, and mad. And I'm like, uh, uh, did you guys read this? Because that's not, that's a work of the flesh. Rivalries, dissension, divisions. My ministry is more important than your ministry. Hmm. Envy. Now let's just go back to jealousy and start over again. So the evidence of the flesh the evidence of the flesh winning the war in our lives is adultery and its anger. It's idolatry and its jealousy. Look, it's orgies and it's envy. It's addiction and it's division. It's all of the above. And you don't have to do all of them to show evidence of the flesh, just one or two, and, and that's a tell in our lives of what is controlling us if those are behaviors that are dominant in our lives. Which, I'm just going to say this, I don't have it in my notes. We're moving into election season. Everybody's excited about it, right? No, because everybody's angry about it. Outrage on every side. And, and you know, can I, just, can I just tell you, the people of God are not driven by anger. Anger is a fruit of the flesh. It is not a fruit of the Spirit. Paul says these behaviors declare that the flesh is winning the battle within, but 
And he isn't in there. I love that. He says, but if you see the fruit of the Spirit, then the Spirit is winning the battle. Right? Galatians 5, 22 and 23. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. By the way, here's the challenge. Next 10 weeks, memorize those. Just memorize them. We're going to spend some time focusing on each one, so you're going to hear it every week. Just go ahead and memorize them. You're like, I can't memorize Scripture. Yes, you can. You really can. But see, that's the character of Jesus. This is what the Holy Spirit is teaching you. Okay, again, you're a follower of Jesus. God the Holy Spirit is in your life. He's in your life to do all kinds of things. He's guaranteeing you to get to go to heaven. Yay! He's guaranteeing you get to go to heaven. Okay, well, I'm just wondering. I mean, guys are like, so? He's in your life to comfort you in your grief. He's in your life to help you make decisions. But he's also in your life to teach you the character of Christ. And by the way, this is not optional. We'll talk more about that next week. But it's not optional. This is, this is what he's doing in your life. And this, Paul says, is evidence of a spirit-led life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So if you want to know how Calvary evaluates people for leadership, I'll tell you. It is not by your education. Yeah, I know. I got a doctorate. So what? doesn't qualify me for leading people to Jesus. You just be honest with that. That's education. It's not what we're looking for. Accomplishment, that's nice, but that's not what we're looking for. Talent, eh, everybody appreciates talent, especially on the worship team, but that's not what we're looking at. Wealth or status, that's, that's not it. We look for people who are walking in the Spirit. Not by your verbal declaration, I'm a spiritual person. Not by your religious resume, look what I've done in the past. No, we want to see do you love people? Is there joy and peace in your life? Do you actually have patience? Uh, you know, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, general self-control. This is what we're looking for. This is the character of Jesus. And by the way, we're going to spend the next nine weeks doing a deep dive on the fruit of the Spirit. So if you're wondering what does that look like, we're going to talk about it. But, you know, we're fighting the spiritual war. And our lives reveal who is winning. And I'm assuming that you want the Spirit to win in your life. Some of you do. Let's try this again. Do you want the Spirit to win in your life? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, it's kind of important because if you don't, you just go ahead and give up and you're going to be miserable. So, so then the Apostle Paul tells us how we get there. He says, look, victory is found in crucifixion. Keep reading. Verse 24. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. You've crucified the flesh. I mean, that is violent language, isn't it? I mean, we're talking about Jesus, and he went to the cross, he was crucified for our sins. And, and, and Paul says, look, if you want to win this battle, you need to crucify your flesh. Now, he's not talking about go and get nailed to a cross and die, although that would take care of it. Uh, but uh, that's not what he's actually advocating what he's doing is he's challenging us to kill our fleshly desires. To annihilate lust, to exterminate anger, to bury envy and jealousy, to execute our addictions. He's like, this is dramatic language. What he's basically saying is, hey, stop managing your sins, stop negotiating with the enemy, and stop playing games with your self-destructive behaviors. He calls us to make a radical commitment to follow Jesus, to surrender to the Spirit-led life, and to repent of the flesh. And by the way, this is common language if you actually read the Bible. Jesus in Luke 9, 23 said, If anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and come follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he will find it. I mean, that's, that's a radical call to uh, deal with your flesh. The Apostle Paul in, in Galatians uh, 2.20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. I'm crucified with Christ. Romans 12, he says, I urge you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies 
as what? A living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable, not extreme, but your reasonable service of worship. Um, see, our problem, pardon me, our problem is we're trying to manage our self-destructive habits instead of crucifying them. We're trying to manage it. Well, I know I got a problem over here, and I got this temptation over here, and I got this issue over here, and I got this addiction over here, but I can manage it. And manage it, managing it means you lose the battle. Victory is found in crucifying it, not managing it. And, and I just want to challenge you to look at your life, and if you have a habit or issue that has, you know, owned you for years and years and years, then you are managing your struggles, you are not crucifying it. You're managing your sin, you're not killing it. We have to confess, we have to repent, we have to pursue the Spirit-led life. So if you're sitting here and you're like, my flesh is winning the battle in this area, I, then take action. Do something. Don't, don't go, well, I need to pray about it. No, you don't need to pray about it. You need to sucker punch that <laughs> sin. Okay, you need to, do, you need to attack it. It's no longer about, like, well, we, we, we gotta pray about what does God want me to do. Look, I'll give you some things to do. Do one, do all of them, but you need to do one of them. Um, look, Monday night, 6.30, in this room, celebrate recovery. They will get real about sin. They will deal with it. They will walk with you through it. They, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a process. It's not a magic pill. It's not easy, but it is worth it, and it will lead you to freedom if you'll walk it. By the way, in a couple of weeks, we're going to Zambia. We're taking a team. We're doing evangelism. And one of the things we're trying to do is we're trying to introduce Celebrate Recovery to that nation. Okay? They don't have any Celebrate Recovery in that country. So uh, we're taking a team. And so pray that those churches will go, okay, this is good. We're going to do this. Uh, but Celebrate Recovery, 6.30 Monday nights. Look, counseling. Get counseling. Sit down with somebody who will tell you the truth about your dysfunction. Not somebody who'll tell you what you want to hear, but somebody who'll tell you the truth so that you can get better. I mean, we've got uh, a lot of counselors in our community that we partner with that we can help pay for. Great people who will, who will help you grow. We've got pastoral counseling available at Calvary. And you can call up and you can talk to people and you make an appointment with counselors, with pastors. We'd love to do that. Look, you need to pray and read. You need to actually go, okay, God, teach me something. Which means you stop talking about reading the Bible, and you actually start reading the Bible. You start picking it up. I can just imagine what, what Jesus would be have. I, I imagine this conversation. Maybe you guys don't imagine stuff like this. I'm weird. That's okay. But, but I'm, I'm just sitting there going, okay, Jesus is like, why are you still struggling with that? And you go, oh, I just can't get free. And Jesus is like, well, I gave you a manual on freedom. Yeah, uh, Jesus, I have 14 copies at my house. <laughs> yeah, but, but have you read any of them? No, no, but I've got them, and I like it a lot, but I, just, I don't read it. I like when people tell me a verse, and I can just kind of think about it. No, he's like, if you want freedom, then read it. If you remain in my word, and, then you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And, and, and so actually pick up the Bible and read it. I don't know where to read. There's, we, look, ask. We will all give you opinions, okay? Um, join a life group. Join a life group. Some of you are surrounded by idiots who don't love Jesus and are and leading you astray. And you need to upgrade your friend group, okay? And, and I know right now it's really a, a terrible time to recruit life groups because summer life doesn't start for a month and then it's another month after that until you can sign up for the, the, the regular ongoing life groups. But join a life group. Just go make a commitment now and just say, I'm going to do this. And email people and, and make this commitment. Maybe you sign up, I'll host one and they can have it in my house. Whatever it is, but surround yourself with people who love Jesus and will help you love him better. And then, can I just encourage you to embrace accountability? Your, your pastors at Calvary and your leaders, your, your deacons at Calvary, all embrace accountability. You say accountability for what? Accountability for what's on our devices, our phones, our tablets, our computers. You know, we do that, not because we're all, you know, struggle with porn addiction, but simply because we don't want to face the temptation that comes from weak moments. 
See, I mean, because we're, you know, again, I'll pick on the guys. I don't, ladies, I don't know what you're thinking or feeling. I'm clueless, but um, we like you, but uh, we're clueless. But, but I know the guys, so I can just talk to the guys. Like, weak moments are there, and you're tired or whatever, and you're like scrolling through, and, and something says, hey, you want to look at this? And you're like, I shouldn't, but I want to. And, uh, and when you got accountability on your device, you're like, heck no. I am not having that conversation Monday morning with my pastors in the office. You know, that, that is a deterrent right there. That's like slam the door, and temptation goes away. That's what accountability looks like. It makes us better. And some of you need accountability for porn, and some of you need accountability for gambling, and some of you need accountability just because you're on your phone all the time. It, but there needs to be accountability in your life. It helps us to succeed in this battle. But you have to decide to take action to kill the flesh and to walk in the spirit because no one's gonna be able to decide that for you. You have to decide, do I want to win the fight or do I want to lose the fight? And finally, Paul issues a warning against pride. He doesn't end right there. He continues on, and he says in verse 25, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. It's interesting. He finishes this battle passage by warning against pride. See, here's, here's why I think he did that. If you're winning the battle against the flesh, praise God. That is awesome. But that also makes us prone to the enemy's sneak attack, which is pride. It's always pride. C.S. Lewis called pride the great sin. In other words, it's the one that besets all of us. It is the mother of all sins. It's the one that says, I want to be in charge. I want to be better. And, and it's easy and tempting to think that we are more spiritual than other people. We're more obedient and we're stronger Christians than those poor, pathetic, weak creatures that are slaves to the flesh. And if we live that out, then we go right back to the place of the legalists in the law and we become conceited and arrogant and enemies of Jesus. Because repeatedly, Scripture tells us God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand that he may exalt you at his time. So if you're winning the battle within, celebrate. Praise God. But remember that you're still part uh, of this whole sin nature and you got this sin body and you got this sin adult brain and you are saved by grace and you're capable of losing at any single moment. That's why we celebrate the grace of God in Christ Jesus because none of us are going to get this perfect. See, we never outgrow our need for Jesus. We never outgrow our need to stop crucifying the flesh and we always need to submit and walk with the Holy Spirit. So if you're a follower of Jesus, you're fighting a battle with him. And my prayer is that you would make the choices to win that battle so that you can live victoriously. If you're not yet a follower of Jesus, we would like you to step into the battle. We would like to invite you just to step into that place of freedom and hope in Jesus, a place where you know that you are forgiven of all your sins, not because of what you do, but because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. And if you don't know how to do that, then uh, fill out one of those Connect cards, drop it in the offering box, come and talk to our prayer team after the service. They'll be here. Find a pastor in the foyer. Look, we love to share with you how you can follow Jesus and how he can change your life. Will you pray with me? Father, we love you. Your love for us is amazing. It is real. It is true. And God, we know that we're in a battle. And you, we know that you know how we lose. You know where we're, we're getting beat up. We're getting beat down. And, and God, we don't want that to happen anymore. We want to walk in the Spirit so that we can have victory over the flesh. We want to live in your blessings. We want to honor Jesus with our lives, with our families, with our relationships, with our businesses, all of it, God. So we pray that you'd meet us here, that you would apply your word in a powerful way, and we would choose to fight the battle that you've already won so that we can live in the victory that only Jesus can give. In his name we pray, amen. 
The mission of Calvary is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. When you give your life to Him and walk by the Spirit, you will exude the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These behaviors will reveal who is the Lord of your life. If today's message has left you with questions, please feel free to email us at questions at calvaryaz.com. One of our pastors will be in touch with you to discuss your thoughts and pray with you. Well, that's all for today. I hope you have a fantastic week. Please come back and join us next weekend. Bye-bye.